Hello everybody. We start today a series of videos and classes on St. Augustine. And St. Augustine is, uh, the philosophy of St. Augustine is divided in different topics. Let's start things off with knowledge. The context in which St. Augustine speaks about knowledge is the context against uh, skeptical philosophers. According to skeptical philosophers, you cannot reach the truth. You can reach some wisdom, and that wisdom gives you happiness, but you can never reach the truth. So for skeptical philosophers, we can say that there is mm, some wisdom here. This wisdom gives you happiness. But you can never attain truth. Truth would be here. And there is no connection between the wisdom you can reach in this world and the truth. St. Augustine explains against these people his understanding of the thing. His understanding of the thing is, on the contrary, that you can reach the truth. Okay, so truth would be here, up here. And insofar as you reach the truth, you reach the real wisdom and you reach the real happiness. Okay? It is knowledge of the truth which gives to me wisdom and happiness. So it goes everything together. Truth and the knowledge of the truth. me wisdom and happiness everything together in one of his works entitled against academics you know uh, versus academicos he explains that how is it possible according to the skeptical philosophers how is it possible that you reach wisdom without reaching the truth it's a contradiction so Augustine understands that it's possible to have knowledge of the truth and it's that knowledge of the truth that gives to you wisdom and happiness. So this is the context in which he explains uh, that we can really know and we can be really certain of things. Of course, for St. Augustine, the truth is Christ. So how does he explain the way we reach truth in a philosophical way? That's, what, that's the next argument of this class. So, certainty. Certainty is the great question that St. Augustine brings up in his epistemology. Certainty. First of all, certainty of abstract principles and mathematical truths. So here is what St. Augustine says. Even though my mind is weak and changing and it's limited, etc., uh, and I, even though I have the experience of doubt, there is always an inner knowledge I have through which I can say, I know that I am doubting. So when I'm trying to understand something and things are not, not easy to understand, uh, we can tell ourselves, I know that I am doubting, and that knowledge is truth, okay, it's something true, it's something that San Agustin takes as truth, so, mm, that's the thing, I know that I am doubting, or in the case of mathematical truths, truths, I know that 3 and 7 make 10. So I'm, I know that I am not doubting when I state that. So I know that I am doubting. I know that 
I am not doubting. That's the way we can reach some certainty. Certainty about abstract principles and mathematical truths. Okay, this is the first step in certainty. The next step in St. Augustine's explanation about certainty is certainty about self. Certainty of self. And he says, well, according to the skepticals, what if I am deceived into thinking that I exist as a means of denying even the truth of my existence? So he places himself in this question that the skepticals bring up. What if I am deceived into thinking that I exist. And this is what St. Augustine replies. St. Augustine says, well, uh, if I didn't exist, I couldn't be deceived into anything. So the fact that I, am, that I can be deceived into something means that I exist. So I am certain of my existence, precisely because I could be deceived into something. So I exist. That's the first thing. I exist, plus I know that I exist, and this is the beginning of self-consciousness. For St. Augustine, self-consciousness is the way you have certainty of yourself. St. Augustine also says, I exist, I live, And finally, I understand. Okay? All these things go together. I exist because I can be deceived into something that couldn't happen if I didn't exist. So I exist. And I know that I, I live. And I know that my mind is understanding things. So these truths go together. And this is the way we have certainty of ourselves. So self-consciousness as way of uh, having certainty of ourselves. And finally, St. Augustine uh, talks about certainty of real objects. How can I be certain of my knowledge of real objects in the world? Certainty of real objects. And as always, he starts by thinking in the mindset of the skepticals. Skepticals say that senses can deceive, so we cannot give any credence to the senses. That's what the skeptical philosophers say. But St. Augustine says, it is an error not to give any credence at all to the senses. So as we, we, as we, we, as we give credence to others, we give some credence to the senses. And this is what St. Augustine calls, I believe in the senses. It is true, senses can deceive every now and then, but it is also true that denying all any credence at all to the senses would be an exaggeration, because in many aspects the senses don't deceive me. So St. Augustine goes for the option to believe the senses as a source of knowledge, as I give credence to others. So belief, he says, we believe the senses. So back to the first step in the self-knowledge, so excuse me, in the, to the first step in the uncertainty, we reach certainty of abstract principles and certainty of mathematical truths by this inner knowledge. I know that I am doubting. I know that I'm not doubting. Then the second step is uh, knowledge of um, self, the certainty of self, which is I exist, I live, and I understand. So this self-consciousness is the source of the certainty. Okay, in the first example, in the first part, the certainty of abstract principle is inner knowledge. In the certainty of self is self-consciousness, which gives me certainty. And in the third point, this, uh, regarding to this certainty of real objects, it is my believing in the senses which gives me 
a new way of knowing the, the reality. Okay, so inner knowledge, self-consciousness, and believing in the senses. And finally, there are three levels of knowledge, according to St. Augustine, and that's what, what we are going to try to explain right now. The first one is sensation, and the, the other one, the most important one, is contemplation, and there is a halfway house, which is different. So let's try to explain the three of them. Let's start with the lowest level of knowledge, which is sensation. Sensation is the way we get to know reality, okay? And it works the following way. My soul, using the organs of, of my senses as instruments, is able to grasp the, the reality out there. For instance, the soul, through my eyes, the organ of sight, okay? The soul through my eyes can grasp the beauty of a landscape, for instance. That's sensation. It's one of the levels of knowledge we can reach. It's the lowest one. And then the highest one is contemplation. In contemplation, what happens is our mind, not our soul, our mind gets to know eternal truths through a special grace of God, which is called in San Agustin illumination. In our minds, there is, by the grace of God, an illumination so that we can contemplate eternal truths. That would be the highest level of knowledge according to St. Augustine. And as I told you before, between sensation and contemplation, there is a halfway house. Which operates as follows. The mind... Okay, the mind, like here in contemplation, not like the soul in sensation, the mind uh, judges real objects or actions according to eternal standards. For instance, uh, my mind contemplates a specific action and judges it according to eternal standards, for instance, according to the law of God, and I can come to the conclusion that that action is not good for me or for someone to be done. So that would be the halfway house of knowledge we can reach, which is a combination of sensation and um, contemplation. Sensation because we get to know real things but we judge them with our minds according to eternal standards. Okay, so it's a combination of both.